Hello guys, what is up? I'm Cameo and today we're going to be doing a first impressions of the new Pokemon game, Pokemon Let's Go. Now I got the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu copy here, um, but there also is a Let's Go Eevee copy as well. Um, basically the only difference is you're starting Pokemon on a couple version exclusives. But we're going to be talking about just the game overall, my first impressions of it. It came out on Friday, November 16th, so I've played it for a couple days and got some things I like, some things I don't like and uh, a recommendation for you whether or not you should buy it if you have a Switch or even if you don't have a Switch. So just a disclaimer real quick, I'm not gonna have any gameplay. There might be a couple screenshots if there's something I talk about that I can't really describe without showing you, but Nintendo does a lot of copyright uh, strikes for people that show gameplay. Um, I don't know how people get around it, but I just don't wanna risk dealing with that right now. I'll look into it later if I potentially do like a Let's Play in the future. But for now, we're not gonna do gameplay. We'll do maybe some screenshots but I got the case right here and that's all that matters. So for those of you who don't know, Pokemon Let's Go is basically a remastered version of Pokemon Yellow. Uh, it's the Kanto region and you start with Pikachu or Eevee depending on which version you have. It's basically, like I said, a remastered version of Yellow but with some new elements in it as well. Uh, a couple of new elements is it has EXP share for your whole party, which is something that I really enjoy in the game. Um, it's something that was implemented, I believe, in Pokemon X or one of the 3DS games, I believe. I didn't play any of them besides X, so I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it was implemented in one of the 3DS games. So having EXP share throughout your whole party makes it so you don't have one super overpowered Pokemon that you use all the time, makes it so your party all gets leveled up, and you can level stuff up like Magic Magikarp without having to actually use them. It's really nice. I really like that feature in the game. Another thing I like about the game is that they don't have wild encounters. So instead of having you know, just Pokemon randomly popping up and you go into a battle with them. Um, what happens is you can see the Pokemon running around and if you run into them or they run into you, then you encounter them, but you don't have to deal with just random Zubats popping up um, or, you know, other things just randomly attacking you when you're trying to get through an area, which means you're not going to be using repels hardly at all. I know they're still in the game, but I have yet to use one just because I've been catching most Pokemon and I'll get into that here in a second. Um, but yeah, repels are basically useless in this game because Pokemon give you XP for catching them. So when you encounter a Pokemon, usually you want to catch it. I've been doing that just so I can get enough XP. Um, you also do have Pokemon trainer battles, but they don't seem to give as much XP as catching Pokemon, especially Pokemon that are um, you know underweight or overweight or just huge in general or tiny they give extra bonuses and you also get bonuses for having a good throw so catching pokemon is really beneficial for your whole party because you get that xp another thing i really like about this game is that instead of having hms they have secret techniques now i think this was implemented kind of in the 3ds games and either like center moon or center ultra moon um but i really do enjoy it I, I like not having to just dedicate you know one pokemon to having all my HMs. I like that you don't have to, you know, waste move slots for it. It makes it really beneficial because you just your your starting Pokemon learns the secret techniques, and then you just keep your starting Pokemon with you, and you can, you know, always have those secret te techniques with you. So it's really beneficial, and I really enjoy it because I've been able to use, you know, like Cut, Flash. Those are the only HMs I have or secret te techniques I have right now. But when I get Fly and then Surf. It's really beneficial to be able to have those without having to, you know, have a certain Pokemon dedicated to HMs and then going and grabbing it when you need it. And then I guess the last thing I, I like about the game, um, it's more of a Switch thing, but the fact that you can have multiple files and multiple game saves is really beneficial because I actually wasn't planning on buying this game originally. My girlfriend bought it because she was, you know, interested in it. And because I saw her play and I'm like, oh, this is actually really cool. It's actually basically a, a remastered version of the Kanto region. I can make a save file on my Switch profile and we can both play the game. So being able to make multiple saves without you know losing your previous save is really beneficial and I really enjoy that part as well. But again, that's more of a Switch thing and not a, a game thing. It's just that the save files are saved on the Switch versus the cartridge, which was a limitation with the uh, previous Pokemon games. Now we're gonna talk about what I don't like about the game and there really isn't a lot. So biggest thing I don't like are the controls. Now I know this game is trying to focus on the controls of Pokemon Go and using the uh, the Joy-Con as kind of like a, a motion control to, th to throw and catch the Pokemon. I really don't enjoy that part um, just because one, it's kind of buggy, especially when Pokemon are like moving around from side to side. It's hard to get the, the Pokeball going 
uh, the right way. Maybe I'm just bad at it. I don't know. But it's also really uncomfortable to play while you're going through the game. I know some people like it um, or don't mind it. I guess I don't know if there's anybody that really, really likes this and prefers this method over the other one. But some people don't mind it. I'm not a huge fan of it. I really only play the game in handheld mode because when you play in handheld mode, you can use the left Joy-Con or left joystick to move. You got buttons on the right side. It feels like a normal Pokemon game. But I will say some people do play docked and do the motion control, but I just can't really get into it because you only use one Joy-Con during that whole thing. So you move with the with the joy, joystick on the right Joy-Con and the buttons, or you use the left one. You won't use one Joy-Con. You can't use a Pro Controller, can't use the Joy-Con grip. Really don't like that feature. If they patched that in so you could use it, that'd be great, but I understand that they want to keep this focused on the Pokemon Go mechanism of you know having that, that action of throwing the Pokeball and that kind of stuff. And plus the accessory that came with it was the Pokeball, basically a Joy-Con that's the shape of a Pokeball. I know that they're really pushing towards that for at least the Let's Go games, so can't really blame them if they don't add that feature in. And kind of coupled with that, I don't really like the catching mechanics in this game. Now they're different, they're a lot like Pokemon Go, like I said, um, but I, I don't like that I can't like attack the Pokemon and make it weaker and then throw a Pokeball to catch it. I have to either use berries or just throw the ball and hope for the best and hope to get it in the little circle, just like Pokemon Go. Again, not a huge fan of this, but I know that's kind of what they were aiming for with this game. So I'm not too concerned because I know when Gen 8 comes out, I would imagine anyway that it'll be just like, you know, the rest of the Pokemon games where it's normal encounters. Um, I'm hoping though with Gen 8 they, they keep the wild encounters out of the game because I really don't like that feature. Now, we'll get to the recommendation here. Should you buy this game? Now, if you're a Pokemon fan and you have a Nintendo Switch, it's a no-brainer. It's a really, really fun game. There's a lot of stuff you can do. You can pour a lot of hours into this game. And just, I mean, at 60 bucks, it's great. You can buy the $100 bundle if you can find it. It comes with the, the Pokeball accessory. Uh, and with that comes Mew. But, I mean, you don't need Mew to complete the Pokedex. So, unless you just really want Mew or you really want that accessory, you don't necessarily need that bundle. I don't even know if you can still find them just because I ordered this on Amazon. So, I would say for 60 bucks, definitely worth it. It's a fantastic game. There's a lot, there's a lot to do, and if you're a Pokemon fan, it's just a no-brainer. Now, the thing is, if you don't have a Switch, um, there's a couple, you know, scenarios of people who don't have Switches. So there's people who are planning on getting a Switch, and there's people who aren't yet in that camp, and they're just like, oh, you know, I, I'd want to play Pokemon, but that's it. Now, for people who are, you know, waiting to get a Switch for Smash Bros, or for, uh, you know, a game coming out like spring next year, whatever the case is, I, I'm not super, I'm not following the, the games that closely because I bought my Switch just for Smash. Um, and I guess this now, but I will say if you're waiting, I would say if you got the money, pull the trigger, get the switch, get the game. In my opinion, this is a system seller, especially if you're already, you know, in the camp of I'm going to buy a switch, just not yet. Uh, Nintendo said the switch is meant to be a seven year console and we're only in the second year of it. Um, so you know, you got plenty of life left. I don't see them making like a like a pro edition system to match the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. It just doesn't it doesn't seem like Nintendo. They might do like a revamped version of the system, but it'll be same hardware. So I would say if you're kind of just waiting for a specific game to come out or you're waiting to see if they make a new version, just pick it up if you got the money. This game is fantastic. Now if you don't have a Switch and you weren't really planning on it, then obviously I don't think this game should sell you on it. If, if you are literally just going to buy the Switch for this game, then I would say probably not. But if you're going to be buying, if you're thinking about buying the Switch for this game anyway, you're probably going to be getting Gen 8. So you'll be needing a Switch at some point. This game is fantastic and I can definitely kill the time between now and then. So. Again, if you're in the camp of, I'm gonna buy a Switch for some game, either this, you know, the rest of this year or next year, I would say pull the trigger. If you're not, I wouldn't, just because $300 is a lot to justify just for one game. But again, if you're, if you're planning on playing two or three in the future, you're gonna have a Switch in the future. Obviously, I would say do it. But overall, this game has been really fantastic. I've been really enjoying it. Um, I've been actually contemplating getting a second Switch just so my girlfriend and I can both play at the same time. Um, but it's, it's just phenomenal. There's a lot of nostalgia with it. It's just a really good game as well. So definitely really enjoying it and I'll be definitely playing a lot more of it over uh, this Thanksgiving break and then into 
uh, the future as well. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I am going to go back and play Pokemon and then probably edit this video later and then upload it. So uh, I don't know when this video is going to go up exactly, but hopefully it gives you guys some good information on this game. But thank you guys for watching. I'm Cameo and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.